<laughs> Hi guys, welcome back to my YouTube channel. It's been one year of a minute. I'm sorry that I went a year on you guys. It was a much needed break, but it wasn't supposed to last this long. I didn't know it was supposed to last half this long actually. But I mean, I'm back now, and really, it's all part of the faith work. So, um, take this as a sign to start that thing that you left in work on now for a while. Um, go back to that thing that you're supposed to have done that you didn't do. This is your sign because, like I said, it's part of the faith journey. We start, we stop, we start, we stop. Like our car that currently stops on the road. <laughs> but that's a story for another day. My name is Rachel. If you're new here, welcome. If you're not, you know now, you're doing all this. Thank you for always coming back. On this channel, I detail my faith work, my faith journey and experiences. Your idea is to make sure you're encouraged, you're edified, and you know, you don't feel like whatever you're going through, you are alone. Because if you think you're alone, the devil has you where he wants to. Let's get right into it. So, have you ever been in a situation? where you're having a casual conversation with someone who you would consider an acquaintance someone you're civil with and then like from nowhere their hands are on your shoulder in a very you know close intimate way and i'm wondering why but that's the annoying part the annoying part is the fact that you didn't see anything you didn't do anything you just smile awkwardly and let the conversation continue then you go home and you are going mad with anger or you are in a place where you feel constantly disrespected by the people around you this particularly for females you feel like uh the male friends you have around you particularly don't respect you and this is not a seniority kind of respect they don't respect your person they don't respect you um your views and it's not like they are generally disrespectful you, you notice that with other ladies they, they the way they behave to others is not the way they behave to you or or girls mistake your kindness for you liking them so you it's almost impossible for you to have authentic female friendship because if you just are with a female and you just be nice or you you just try to take care of them which you think is your nature all of a sudden they think you like them and then they they want to push for something to happen but when you're not reciprocating they're angry and even call you out for leading them on well, if this is if any of these examples is you, this video is for you, and I have one word for you. You might just be loose. Yeah, count that. Don't go up there. <laughs> just hold on. Yeah, but the first time I was told I was loose, maybe three, four years ago, I was pissed because I'm a believer. Tom talking, what speaking? How do you tell me I'm loose? Like, what's bringing that leg? Yeah, I was very angry for a while until I was taught. I got to listen and I got to understand. What is really meant by being loose. Contrary to popular culture and you know street life, looseness is not when you have multiple sexual partners. Though looseness can lead you to having multiple sexual partners, but that's not what it is really. Looseness is the lack of boundaries, you know. Um, I think Miriam Webster defined boundary as setting limits, an extent to which things can go, an extent to which your relationship with somebody should go. But a loose person is one who does not have those extent. So a loose person is unguarded, is unfenced, you know. The, the, a loose person does not put up fences around them. So anything goes, anyone can reach them. I don't know if you've been, if you've seen people or you couldn't, it, it, it can even be you, where you realize that you seem to be very close to everybody. You have a somewhat special, close, intimate, but in intimate, I don't mean physical intimacy or sexual intimacy. You just, it just looks like you're close to everybody. You can be in different people's life, but now that you are close to them, this one knows you in a, in a special way. This one knows you in a special way. And guess what? You're, you're not involved with any of them. You're not cutting any of them. Such that if someone who was interested in cutting you was in that room, he would think, ah, if everybody has a bit, um, a bit of you, what's it coming in? Do you so that's what really looseness is and today I like to deal with the issue of boundaries and being loose and what it can cost you. I'm going to give um, about four principles that will guide us throughout this video so when I'm speaking you will lay them on the background of these principles. First is that we have different kinds of boundaries. Siblings, um, parents, children which is <laughs> almost rare in Nigeria or Africa as a whole, um, um, boundaries between colleagues, boundaries between spouses, husband and wife I mean, 
um, and all of that. But today, I want to really deal with boundaries between male and female, like boundaries how to deal with male and female relationship, not necessarily cutting or spousal relationship, just boy and girl, how to how a woman should deal with a man, how a man should deal with a woman, and the appropriate boundaries that should, that should be placed in it. Secondly, this video is going to be two parts because I don't want to make each of the video long. The first part will be addressing the women. Now, I didn't say it's for the women because men should listen to it also because it will guide you in your dealings with women. But I would address um, the female folk more in the first one. The second one will be addressing the men. But I advise that whether you are male or female, you should listen to both videos so that you have a round and balanced perspective. Why I strongly advocate that both the male and female sexes should put up boundaries and stick to them. I mean, I'm shooting two videos. That is like a, a proof, right? But I'm of the opinion that um, setting on boundaries is more of the responsibility of the woman. Now, the first time I read about this, I was really angry because I thought, oh, here we go again. Another reason for men to be lazy and women to put on all the work. I honestly thought that if you're thinking so, it's okay. But a uh, further reading and further guiding uh, of the Holy Spirit just made me realize that it is not actually a responsibility. Thing. Women are naturally regulators, character regulators, behavior regulators. I'd explain, please stay with me. Um, women are like thermostats, they regulate the environment they are in. A woman walks into a room of guys who are loud, shouting, bro, you know, being wild. There's always a pause. You know, whether it's a woman they know or not. Usually there is a, you know, everyone just, you know, it's like a 30 minutes, 30 seconds to one minute thing. Everyone calms down for a minute to just, okay, I was supposed to continue shouting. I was supposed to, if another man walks in, it joins the, the brow, it joins the, you know, the loudness, the wildness. For a woman, say calm first. Now, if it's a woman that maybe is their guy, there's a respective friendship, all of them, they can continue. But even there's a, there's a, the tone will be lowered. It's just a respect that everyone just gives. The guys don't even, most times, the guys don't even know this is happening. The women don't know this is happening. But it happens. It's just a man and woman dynamic. Now, for some of this environment, if it's a place where the woman is not really respected, they can come especially if they were brawling and maybe um, being animalistic now, not just being wild. Everyone, they can continue because they don't they don't care about the woman's opinion but if it's a woman that one of the guys like chances are that thing has scattered like everybody just be themselves why it's just a regular you see you know how is the way of a man with a woman forget it that's how it is women are just regulators and the the earlier we realize this the, the better a lot of things will be for us you know the world in the past few years has really made women feel like victims there's a certain level of victimhood that is being spread across social media now or mainstream media where uh, women now feel more like victims than powerful people that they are there's so much power in the delicate <laughs> delicacy <laughs> There's so much power in the delicate nature that God has, um, that God made us with, that if we tap into that power, <laughs> a lot of things can be done. So in a relationship, a man would give what, she, what he thinks the woman would accept. If he, and that's why sometimes a same man will be with one woman and give barest minimum. That same man will be with another woman that does not, will not have it. And he likes, and doesn't want to lose, he will sit up. Why? The woman decided what she wanted what she wanted to accept now of course for the rest of this video this video applies to people who are okay normal people not mad people so mad people are the exception to these rules to this video so please don't say what about those ones even after you say this is what you want they will still do what they want to do they are mad you should i don't know why you're mad people in the first place give that conversation and stay with normal people you know okay people you understand all right speaking of women being regulator god, regulators god created women uh, uh, in our relationships for the men to pursue the women to be the pursued and because of that naturally a, even a, a teenager that would just started you know having birds and puberty all of that feels like he's to pursue a woman if he's and sometimes he pursues any woman even the one that he has no business pursuing is the woman that decides who or who not do you understand? Because you are the one that is being pursued, you must realize that you are a beautiful garden that people want to pluck flowers off. And you cannot allow a random person to pluck your flower. 
that, 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 that came out one kind but you don't get what I'm saying. So you must build, imagine having a Ugu garden. That's why people build fences, for a goat will not break in. So people are goats, they should not be allowed, some people are dogs, they should not be a, And some of them are our Christian brothers, they do, some of them do it consciously, some of them they don't even know they are subconsciously. Some others don't even know we're doing it. That's why we're having this video, to teach them. Do you understand? So no, 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 no. Build the fence around you and keep the fence. If someone tries to break it, push them out. Actually, shoot them with a shotgun. Okay, that's a bit of the extreme, but <laughs> you get it. So yeah, women are regulators. Fungies are not just replaced by single people. You know, it's not only single people that, that can be loose. With my definition of looseness, you know, even my people can be loose. Someone who lacks boundaries disrespects their spouse. So if you go around hug, hugging everybody, everybody's calling you boo, everybody's calling you babe. And not in a, there's a jovial way that all of us, you know, play and we live. But somehow everybody just feels like they have access to you. Imagine your husband or your wife is in the middle of a conversation and everyone has a side, a close, you know, intimate side of you. They, you take yourself as that person. Your spouse is who everyone has, um, excuse me. Your spouse is everyone, is who everyone has a closeness to. How do you feel? So boundaries are not to be set. Don't think when you are married, it will save you. Pull now, you won't have to put boundaries. Boundaries are for everybody. Finally, this is not a toxic fe feminism conversation. Actually, it's more of a opening women up to, the, to the power of their femininity and men to the power of their masculinity. So this is not a man against woman talk or a gender no baby. All the guys around you, all the women around you are people that you don't think you can marry as a single person. But they are, they are so much around. It shows a lack of boundary. It shows a lack, it's, it's a looseness issue because you allow them into your life. You allow people who you cannot marry. So you just you look at 10 of your friends or 10 of the people around you, 10 of the guys to you, 10 of the girls liking you. And some of them, none of them are people that you want to marry. It's a problem. You allow them into your space. Please, no matter how I sound, I, I, I speak out of love. I speak out of someone who has been there and has gotten into a lot of trouble for just not having uh, boundaries, for being loose. So please, I'm not even judging you. <laughs> I cannot judge you. I'm chief of the scene that I'm talking about. I'm on the table. And while I've grown a lot over the years, I still find myself on, you know, shaking somehow in some ways. So please don't feel judged. There are always going to be toxic people around you. You cannot trust people to always know what to do. You can't trust people's common sense. You can't say everyone should know that that thing is not good now. That you shouldn't touch me like this now. That I I I just came to your house to just see you now. No, you cannot. <laughs> that table. Don't. You can't put your life on other people's sense. You you don't know what's in their head. Whether you made them in church or wherever you made them, they are Christians like you. It's you that you know. So that's why it's on you to set boundaries. It's on you to decide how you want to be treated. Now that we are there, one of the ways you, you, show, that you show a lack of boundaries is when you go to someone's house um, late. You know, I, I remember when I was in school, and this has happened to us a lot, to us a lot in school, um, when you, you go to a boy's house by 5.30 p.m. You get there, you now want to watch a movie. King of Boys, that is three hours. Yeah, there was no King of Boys that time. You start playing the film by 5.30. By the time the movie is done, maybe it's 9 o'clock. You say, oh, it's too late. Oh, I don't think I should go home. Eh, eh. It's not you that carried yourself here by 5, 5.30. Abi, it's not you that the side of all movies to watch is King of Boys three hours you want to watch. What do you think was going to happen? And then at night, when somebody is touching you and bringing their hands out, you'll be like, what are you doing? I didn't come here for this. Just for the impression you gave, you walked into this person's house, male or female, by 5.30 p.m. And guys, this thing can, this, spe this specificity which I'm speaking, this thing, don't feel judged. This is not just revelation from heaven. I, I didn't sleep and God gave me. I walked this path before. <laughs> I'm saying this over and again so no one feels judged really, yeah? And you know that you're not the only one that made that mistake. And that also don't make the mistake now. You communicated subconsciously to this person that, look, I want to stay here. But I want to spend the night, but I don't want to say I want to spend the night. You, you make a decision to do this. What's the background? What's the consequence of this decision you have made? You go by 5 you see a long movie, knowing that this movie will end by 9 o'clock, and you don't get to stand up by 7 to leave. Of course, you are taking towards the part of sleeping in this house. That 
lack of boundaries will put you in awkward situations that you have no you know you have no business in a lack of boundaries we might even get you into relationships all of a sudden because you didn't have boundaries on the conversations you're having with this person on the text you know the kind of message you were sending to this person somehow you are in a, a full-blown relation or just in an awkward place with people it will even make you lose friends now um speaking of awkward places i remember one time when i was in school i can't remember the level i was in but maybe uh, almost I was probably three or four level and I had a friend never told this story before and uh, we used to just chat and geez I don't think there was WhatsApp like WhatsApp was popular then so we used to send messages I, I think it was WhatsApp I'm not sure but we should just geez and laugh and talk all of that call you know you come around to my host or stay on campus close to my hostel, I've not been given like this proper accommodation or something like that. We used to jeez, I knew that his family was not here yet, so I knew that his family was coming or so the way. So anyway, one day by 2 a.m. I was coming from my work. Well, you know how school environment can be, particularly in the exam period. Everyone is reading at night. So night does not really look like night. Everywhere is busy. It looks like just you know, a random evening. This is not an excuse still. This lodge was before my hostel and I don't know whether he suggested I should just drop by or I said oh I'll stop by I'm not sure it's something I can do to say oh I'll just drop by say hi it's something I can do so I cannot put myself out of the situation and then I went to so I went to his lodge oh uh, and I see good thing and funny enough I was still doing good evening sir good afternoon sir I was un unintentionally just being loose unintentionally just no naivety and that's why I'm making this video so you, you will be intentional about your boundaries so I went to the house, I put my existing, I cannot even remember, I can't find my time by this person's name. That's how much I've forgotten about the story and this person. But I don't know what led to what, it started to touch me. Now, guess what, I was not attracted to this person in any way. I mean, any way. It was just someone who was intelligent, I could relate to. Anyway, it started to touch me. I can't even remember, see, I can't remember the picture. I think my mind just, um, you know, um, hid it. And I shot ran away. I left. I just, I just had to go. I told like, no, no, no. This is not what I came for. I just something like that. Either ways, I left. Guess what? I'm sure that time I was very angry with him. But right now, retrospectively, I'm not. Actually, I was very stupid. That was the very stupid thing to do. Because why are you going to a man, a full blown man's house by 2 a.m. or by 7 p.m. even? Do you understand? Someone you have, you don't want to sleep with, but you are going. So that what we have, people will chase. What are you thinking about? So, lack of boundaries will just put you in funny places where you shouldn't be. All of a sudden, because you didn't stop somebody, one person starts calling you sweeter anyhow, up and down. Before you know, everybody in this space starts calling you sweeter. Why? So, four weeks ago when I was on duty, I called a work colleague on our intercom and um, for, for something work related. He picked the phone and I think he said babe, but I wasn't babe. I wasn't sure. I wasn't sure. I didn't push it. I asked and I wanted to ask. I hung up. Two weeks after, I called the same person again and, and he goes, babe, I have to say wait to. This second time, I think I'm hearing babe. If I think it is most likely happening. So I said, um, did you call me babe? He said, yes. I said, please pick up your receiver. That's the, the head. I wanted to make sure that he was not on loudspeaker. And I went, uh, you cannot call me babe. I'm really not comfortable with it, you know. He said, oh, you apologize. And that was it. So this after, somebody that I, I barely know, like, we walked past it. We just walked past each other most times in the facility. We, in fact, I, the last time I saw him was last year, a while ago. That's how far we don't know. I see him mostly when I go to take food from the canteen, and he's also there to take food from the canteen. And he goes, "What's up, babe?" I wasn't sure what I heard was where far, but this is the second time I, I think I heard something. I stopped and I turned. I said, "Hey, um, did you? What did you call me? Or uh, what did you say?" He said, "I said, what's up, babe? What's up, babe? It was even babe." I'm like, "I'm sorry, you can't." You can't call me babe. <laughs> and I said it awkwardly and laughed too. But I was very friend money. He said, Oh, okay. And what I get to do, he said, Oh, okay. I said, My name is Rachel. You can call me that. What's your name? He told me, I said, Nice to meet you. And that's the thing. I have a name. I'm not the girl that must not be named. <laughs> I have a name. I will give you the name. Call me that name. Don't call me another name. There are very few people in my life that can come to Sweet Adali. Very few. And most of them, apart from my one that's not even come to Sweet Adali, calls me Lover or something, or Babe. The people that can come to Sweet Adali are people who are maybe even older than me and I see as uncles. And they actually behave like uncles in a relationship. It's not uncles that are trying to press you. Do you understand? Those ones now, call them off. So down to what you what you allow people to call you shows your it's, it's part of you putting up boundaries. If you call me 
a name that feels special to you, feels like you're the only one that calls me, it will create a false sense of intimacy. So that's, so in case you're wondering why can someone call you babe or boo or boo fan or whatever, it's that it creates a false sense of intimacy. All of a sudden, this person feels like you people are something that you are not. Why? We don't have that vision. You cannot call me babe. My name is Rachel. I have a name. Name it. Do you understand? Having boundaries will save your children. The reason why a lot of us went through some of the things we went through in our early adult teens to early adult life is because we were not taught what boundaries were as preteens or as children. We can't let that happen to our children. We can't even let that happen to younger girls. I see some younger girls who constantly feel disrespected, constantly feel like, you know, a boy is talking to you and is entering you, but you don't know how to push him back. It's because no one taught them how to do boundaries. That's what. That's why we must now learn boundaries. No boundaries. You remember when I said uh, lack of boundaries might lead to sexual harassment? Now imagine that guy in stop or he, he, he overpowered all. Maybe as I said, he was coming by 2 a.m. Baba took something, maybe Viagra or whatever, just for some extra pump action. And I, as I got there, it was already all pumped up. And I'm saying no, that's not what I came for. And it's like his emotion got, you know, that in his blood. His blood was all over, I'm like, I can't do it. And then he pressed me down and ripped me. What would have happened? The first person would have been, what were you doing there by two years? Oh God, oh God, thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Because this, that thing could have escalated. Thinking about, what were you doing there in the middle of the night? I don't even know if it was two years. Like I said, I'll confirm the story. But my own thing was late. What was I doing there? Now, don't come at me with, uh, don't shame the victim. Talk about the, let's just shower up first. We live in a falling world. If you are a believer, you, this world is, is tending towards destruction. We can't save it. Why would we try to preach out more to make sure people are saved? We can't control all that. We can't control them. It's free will. And until they come, we must guard ourselves. It's like me now. My children will learn karate young. And it's not those karate to control your mental. It's karate to break teeth. Let's leave all those Chinese karate to control yourself. Break anybody's teeth that doesn't have. But I will first of all teach my children to make sure they are not in that place where they have to break teeth. But if push comes to show, be ready to scatter teeth. So I said this to say, don't don't give me the excuse of uh, you know you know this they were saying train the boys or you know train the, them not to not to um, it's not it's never the victim's fault. Train the boys to be well behaved. <laughs> Am I going to trust my life with, the, with someone's training? What if the training is not collect the training or they not training? I'm going to be, so I have to first of all behave. Why do you think I walked in? You might do everything right, and yes, there's a part where you will do everything. You're walking on the street, and someone that's a different case. And God forbid that is not our portion in the name of Jehovah. We're well protected, we're well guarded in the name of Jesus. But for the for the situations you can control, control them. It's like saying then our accent will still happen for road now, road now, highway. People say they die. Then you don't you don't fix your brakes or you don't fix your tires because accidents will come up on the road no try it enter the road well done come back and tell me how you as a young lady for example why are you staying in the house with four boys that are not your brothers even four boys that your brother said if you stay in your room it's even risky but why are you staying with four five guys in one house that are not your brother the thing is we think too highly of ourselves it's the fact that you think that no, nothing is going to happen. That like you're going to stay in one room or one room and parlor with four boys and you people will be seeing yourself every day. You can you will of course you will you will you won't you will lose guard now. You will not always be well dressed, you will wear shorts sometimes, you'll you be without your bra sometimes. What's going to happen? Like what do you think? We need to understand that eh, as much as we are brethren, brothers and sisters in the Lord, we're not brothers and sisters in the flesh. Physically, we are not brothers and sisters, and our flesh is working. Keep your boundaries. Finally, finally, how do you set boundaries? How do you set boundaries, and how do you make sure people respect your boundaries? Number one, number one, verbally speak up. Be verbal. While there's sometimes where you can non-verbally push what you want, most times people might not hear or understand non-verbal communication. It can be mistaken. For, for some scenarios, you can start with non-verbal and move to verbal very quickly. For example, you are in a group and someone take a picture with you. And then, don't forget, this, this particular video is, is for the women. And then their hands are on your waist, like your lower waist. Guys, that thing is meant for one person. And the thing is, the truth is, these things used to be common sense before in the before before world. That's why when they teach Britons, if you see a lot of um, what's, 
Elizabethan movies when they are dancing. A man that is not interested in you or you don't have something to do cannot. Sorry, I'm, I'm, my hand is down. So if you're dancing, for example, you know that uh, what do you call it? Dance, slow motion dance. <laughs> um, a man that you have, you don't have anything with. His hands, you know, your one hand is supposed to be behind, and one hand is supposed to be here for you, for you, to, for the lady to put her hand. This hand that is behind you cannot go to your waist area here. It cannot, so his hand cannot be here. His hand has to be here. Upper body it used to be common sense, but like I said, sense is being thrown off. Don't forget, all of us are not gender free. No, God forbid, all of us. So sense is being thrown off. We must bring it back. If someone's hand is there, for example, you're taking a picture, take the hand up. Like you take it up. That's a non verbal comment. If you, if you do that, they take it down. Take it up. If you do that, they take it up. You, you, you not go verbal. You can't put your hand on my waist when we take pictures. You know that my nice and firm smile. Please put your hand on my back, on my waist. First of all, why you even must your hand be there? Why can't we all stand? <laughs> or even when you laugh, you are <laughs> into the person's bosom. Why? So, start from non-verbal and go to verbal. You have to speak up sometimes. With boundaries, men would always try to push. Men would always try to overreach. If you don't stop them, they will take it as a yes. They will push more. So, speak up verbally. I don't like the way you speak to me. I don't like that tone in which you used to talk to me. I don't like that message you sent to me. I think it's inappropriate. I don't, you know, put out the don'ts. I don't think it's okay. You know, I, I know earlier I said shoot with a shotgun. You know, uh, uh, shotgun is really your the last case there. At first, be firm. For example, the person I told you to stop calling me babe, if you didn't stop calling me babe, I will cut him off. Boundaries, verbal, speak up, be clear, keep it short. And one of the reasons that will stop you from doing that is because you want to be accepted by everybody. And that's like an esteem issue. Find your esteem in God first. Maybe a video will come up on that. Don't send mixed signal. Don't break your fences first. You can't say, I don't like the way you talk to me or I don't like that message. You are the one that said you don't want someone to text you after 9 p.m. By 9.31, they are not texting. Hi, uh, I just want to check up on you. You have broken the boundary now. So tomorrow you will think that, oh, she texted me by 9.30. It's okay to start by 9, to text her by 9.30. Whatever that you have said, conscious, um, consciously don't break it. If you catch yourself subconsciously breaking it, back out. Draw and limit access. If a man is trying to test your boundary, he tests it more, you push it, you draw. And if he keeps doing it, limit access. Cut it entirely. When a man acts inappropriately towards you, don't laugh it off awkwardly. Don't leave it in the awkward, in the awkward laughter. Keep a straight face. Let him see you look at him. Like I see. I see you, see me, see you. I don't find it funny, sir. Don't laugh. It's not funny. It's at your own expense. They will push next time. Consistent with your boundary. Don't be here today. Don't uh, mm -mm. be consistent and enforce. Also, another way you can um, accept boundaries is how you dress. When you dress a funny way, you are you send a signal with your dress. And the things people, the people of the world know this. That's why when a girl is going for a date, there's a way she wants to dress in the world. When a girl is going for a job interview, there's a way she wants to dress. If a girl is going for a job interview in the world with the motive to even seduce somebody into, you know, maybe she just gets into that, someone likes men there. There's a way she will dress. But somehow it looks like we didn't get this memo in the Christian side. So we dress and we're the ones that are supposed to even have this memo. There's a way. So when you dress a certain way, you wear a, first of all, body con dresses, I think they should be banned. So, <laughs> you wear a certain dress, cleavages are showing, ties are showing, hips, laps are showing. What do you think you are communicating? Like, no, what do you think is going to happen? You want to be woke, right? Woke, woke it. Like I said, if you come and come and shout, um, everyone, I can dress down to everyone should mind their eye. Where well on, where, well, where well on, yeah? Continue what doing what you are doing. When the world will finish you, your eye will clear. Again, we live in a falling world. We cannot trust our lives to man people. Yes, yeah, people who dress fully can also be raped. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So the way we dress actually suggests to people what we want. We can dress suggestively without even knowing. You know, the flip side of this dressing part is um, adjusting your, your private clothes in public. You know, so your bra or doing the under of your bra, uh, you know, you know, just, you know, doing like this, doing like this, all those things that we do. Sorry, I shouldn't be doing this on YouTube video, but yeah, this is where you get your comfortable. 
this thing used to be on. Let me give a, an example. So you 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 are in public in a meeting or something, and then you start to adjust. Some of us even go as far as putting our hands inside to just you know. Sorry, if a boy, you can really fast forward now. Yeah, and you do all of that, and then someone sees you, a guy now sees you doing that, a guy that did not even used to think of you like that. But we know that guys are very, uh, they can create mental pictures a lot. He sees you doing that, and the first thing, all of a sudden, you realize, oh, Rachel has breasts. He has never seen you. God, oh, it was fire. I don't know if I'm going to put this on words, but you know, Rachel has, oh, there was clearly something there that's not clothes and chest. There was something there, oh, okay. You give him something to think of. Someone who was not thinking of you, like I said, um, everyone should behave themselves, you know, all of that. I shouldn't have to do, I shouldn't have to put myself a certain way because some people are not okay. I know, but we live in a funny world. Again, you must protect yourself. People of God, let's buy a good bra. I say let's buy because it's our table together. So, because two things will really cause your bra to be uncomfortable or itchy in uh, itchy public. One, a dirty bra. Two, bad material, like the... the no, those cheap brands that we buy, the materials are not very, maybe um, you have a sensitive skin, it's not good. Number three, the bra is just too old and bad. Whatever one, maybe we should just close our eyes, invest money and buy a good bra. If you say bras here, yeah, good bras, come to my comment section, we need you. Finally, which is the part that girls don't do, respect other people's boundaries, particularly male. If a guy tells you this, women can be very manipulative, we can be very manipulative. If a guy tells you this, this is respect his boundary, because if you break his boundary, two things will happen. If if the sensible guy, he will walk away. And guys, I'm making a video, a full video for you guys in the next video. So please watch that video. Look, look out for it. If the sensible guy, and I'm telling you guys, you're watching this. If a girl breaks your boundary, keeps breaking your boundary, walk away. It shows your worth, ladies. If it's not a sensible guy and you keep breaking this boundary and he stays with you, yeah, he stays in the friendship or relationship, whatever it is now, it would break your own boundaries. Because you just communicated to him that I don't respect your boundaries. So, so and this thing most times is a sub subconscious battle. He said, Why should me? So, why should I respect you? But then, in fact, around here, I know we are boundaryless. You do me, I do you, we are okay. Do you understand? Guys, this video as that now is 52 minutes. <laughs> I hope I can edit it down to 20 minutes, really. Thank you for coming. Uh, thank you for watching. I'd like to hear all your thoughts in the comment section. What you think, your questions. I don't I don't even mind, mind doing a full-blown video again to answer any question that come. Watch out for the part two. It's going to be very interesting, very wonderful. Thank you for coming. I'll see you next week. Bye.